Disgraceland is a rock and roll true crime podcast about musicians getting away with murder and behaving very badly. I had thought about doing a podcast for a while. Um, I didn't. I knew I wanted to do something on music, but there's a lot of music podcasts out there. I grew up loving crime novels and reading true crime stories and figured uh, the melding of the two would make for an interesting podcast. It was also right around the time that I started thinking about this, my first son was really young and I was rereading Legs McNeil's Please Kill Me, this great book on punk rock and kind of re-realized that all my heroes were animals. <laughs> so the rock and roll true crime thing kind of came together that way. The scope of Rick James, who's kind of a, you know, a national punchline now, but he was just a straight up criminal his whole life. His mom ran numbers for the mob when he was a little kid and he helped her out. He moved drugs for the Colombian cartel and then straight up through the, the crack days at the end that we all kind of know about. But I was just surprised to see that the dude's whole career was just like, criminal minded all the way through. I've been able to separate the music from the musician my whole life. I think what I try to do with this question we're all kind of as a culture going through right now with this, how do we reconcile the two, is I try to think of the victims and try not to lose sight of there's actual real human collateral damage at the end of these stories or within these stories. And I think if we can keep that in our minds somewhere, it'll help us sort of understand the music a little bit better, maybe. It's tough. I don't like Bon Jovi's music, but I have a ton of respect for the guy. I mean, he's gone this far. I think he's been married the whole time and, you know, supposedly a good father. And I mean, I guess I like Wanted Dead or Alive, but whatever. Um, Springsteen, the same thing. There's not much, not much dirt on Springsteen. I think Bono as well. So yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I refer in some of my writing to the music industry and the music music in general is like the devil's workshop and it is there's just so much temptation and to find people who make it through that and are successful and don't fall prey to it is pretty pretty rare my challenge is the same no matter how popular or how well known an artist or a story is and that's for me to be interested in the story i need to be hooked by something and with Big Lurch, I was just as hooked, even though I didn't necessarily like the artist, I was hooked by the sort of the, the, the tent poles of that story in the same way that I was with the anecdotes in the Kurt and Courtney story that, you know, I knew the larger story, but you know, just revisiting things like he was on a plane with Duff from Guns N' Roses, jonesing for heroin, like that's fascinating to me. I wanna tell Kurt's story through those weird anecdotes. I'll just say that I was strongly encouraged by a very powerful church not to release that episode. Um, and I have not been discouraged. I've actually the opposite. Family members have contacted me and been positive and overwhelmingly positive, which was a shock and I didn't expect. But I think when you get, you know, you know, a couple generations removed from people, it's just like, wow, that's my, my grandfather did that? I'm his grandson. You know, they're kind of excited like that type of thing certain stories about very powerful groups that have um, sought to very violently keep stories from coming out. I've actually been deep into research and been like, well, I can't, I can't do this. I can't go there anymore, you know? And conversely, uh, some stories have actually done, like the last three of, episode, of season two were all about the same subject matter. And by the time I was at the end of it, I was just like, I can't have my head in this space anymore. I need to, I need to unplug and focus on something else. I, I'm inundated with suggestions from uh, listeners, which is awesome. Uh, but most of them I've, I've already sort of flagged on my own and have a list of, and I've been reading about this stuff, rock history, music history my whole life. So a lot of things I've, I may have read 10 years ago and I'll be like, oh, what was that Hank Williams thing? I'm gonna go down that rabbit hole. And pretty soon I'm like, oh, there's an episode here. I can do this. I think even today with the release of the Kurt Cobain episode, I'm hearing from people who are like, I had no idea that this happened. I was really young when it happened and I was kind of conscious of it, but I didn't really know the details. And that makes me happy to be able to shine a light on that stuff. Part of it is the delivery and the way that it's actually consumed. 
versus other media right now. I feel like we go through our days and we're just being shouted at constantly, constantly by media. I think podcasts are more popular now because of the intimacy of the storytelling. You can go deep and be concise at the same time. You don't have to express yourself in 140 characters and expect to have impact. You can, so it's a perfect melding of those two things. Uh, well, R. Kelly, of course, but that's 10 episodes and that story's not done yet. Um, I think uh, Ryan Adams as well. Uh, Michael Jackson, I'm kind of afraid of. You know, it's, too, it's just too complicated. Um, but those three, because they're so topical right now, and more so because I just want to learn more about them and what drove them and what the situations actually were. I want the storytelling to be compelling. I want it to compel people to not only listen, but to think differently about the subject matter and to think about the music that they're in, the culture that they're consuming. I have not met any of the subjects. My business partner on the production side was like, man, just don't piss Snoop off. I want Snoop to like us. <laughs> like, I can't, <laughs> I don't know, he might, he might hate it. I have no idea. But yeah, I'd love to meet Snoop. Um, Dre would be incredible. I think the guy's a genius. I mean, yeah, I'd love to meet any of them, you know? Um, but still, I want to tell the first priority is to tell great stories and not be uh, swayed by meeting your heroes. But I am performing Disgraceland Live in Denver the weekend that the Rolling Stones are performing in Denver, and I'm doing a Rolling Stones episode, so I'll buy you drinks, Mick. Come on out. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more videos from your favorite artist. And while you're here, check out these other videos.